Hey guys, it's Kevin Lawn with the New Warehouse Podcast here at Modex, and I am in the Resident Link booth for our collaborative Power Talk series. And I'm joined by my friend Mike Myers of Third Wave Automation. Mike, yeah. how's it going? Good. Thanks for having me, Kevin. Definitely happy to have you on. Uh, so tell us a little bit about Third Wave Automation, what it is that you guys do for people maybe that are not familiar. Yeah. And also tell us too, because you guys are big on shared autonomy. Yes. What does that mean to you? Yeah, so Third Wave Automation builds autonomous vehicles for the warehouse distribution and manufacturing space. Uh, primary products today are Retruck, and we just actually announced at the show uh, Double Deep Reach. Nice. Uh, and to get to shared autonomy, when you think about autonomous uh, vehicles, automated applications, doesn't really matter. Eventually, they run into some type of problem that the system hasn't been uh, engineered or programmed to handle. So our core concept is let's let a human share autonomy with the fleet of vehicles to help robots overcome the problems. Interesting, interesting. And I, and I think that's such a great approach too, especially as some people maybe are a little nervous maybe about yeah. getting into the automation role. So so I'm curious, uh, especially now, I guess at the show this week and we're on the third day, so I'm sure you've yeah. talked to several people at this point, considering yeah. how many people are actually in here. So you talked to at least a handful, right? A couple, yeah, yeah a couple. Yeah. So, uh, as you talk to those people, I mean, how how are they kind of receptive or how are they receiving kind of that shared autonomy aspect of it? Yeah, so this is our first show having a, a live demo right. li running truck, right? Yeah. Uh, and the perception has been awesome. There is inevitably uh, questions about speed, right, that you kind of expect with automated yeah. vehicles. Uh, but by and large, people have been really excited to see an autonomous vehicle moving pallets about and they get the uh, the shared autonomy concept really quickly, right? Being able to point out that, hey, this pallet, we dropped it, it's skewed, uh, autonomous systems are gonna struggle with that, but because we have John here, remote operating, he can help the truck get back on course. Nice. Uh, and then, you know, for really early uh, adopters, right. they're, they really like the concept that you can still get on and drive, right? right? So if you decide to, you can, key the vehicle into a manual mode, step on it, drive it like it's a normal or non-autonomous manual vehicle. Right, yeah. Yeah, I think that's great. And I think that gives them kind of that ease of mind a yeah. little bit, yeah, right? Yeah, Especially yeah. as they're, they're entering into this automation phase and trying to probably figure out what does that mean for us, right, as a company. 100%. Um, so I'm curious as companies are coming to you guys and, and looking at your solution or you're talking to them at the show, you know, what's really ultimately leading them down the path of automation? Yeah. It, I think there's a number of drivers. So labor acquisition, labor rates are still tough. Mm -hmm. um, it's subsided a bit, but it's yeah. still a tough market. And particularly in the 3PL space, there's just market competition to have technology, being able to provide solutions to end customers. Uh, and I think both of those are really the driver. Yeah. There's, you know, inevitably, you hate to hear it, but there's inevitably somebody who just had a, a safety incident, right? So it's fresh on their mind. Hey, right. how, how do we go about addressing this uh, in a way that's beyond just retraining or coaching the kind of yeah. typical answer? Yeah, yeah, yeah and I think, that's a, I think it's an interesting thing, I mean, around the safety aspect, too, of, of kind of reducing that, because I think a lot of the, you know, a lot of the conversation is usually always around, you know, how do I address my labor challenges and things like that. But I think autonomy and, and autonomous vehicles and looking at those types of things, I mean, addressing safety aspects is a, is a huge part huge of it part. too, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, how important is that for third wave? It's hugely important. Yeah. Um, we, so both from the shared autonomy standpoint, right? Yeah. Our perspective is that we've actually made a safer system by default even with all things being equal, because we've had, we now have that operator off the floor, right? So without shared autonomy, it means you're walking to a vehicle that's in an unknown state. You're trying to help it get back on the course. Meanwhile, things are happening around you. Right. Whereas we're keeping that person remote from the vehicle. Yeah. Um, but more importantly, from a, a general safety standpoint, it, it's honestly one of the driving forces behind a lot of the behaviors of our system. Um, it's why you'll see the truck throw assist in situations where right. to a bystander, it, it doesn't, it's not overly apparent, but the truck sent something that it deemed uh, as a potential safety issue and it elected to let the human provide the guidance to help it get back on course. Right, yeah, and I think that's such a, a great thing too to call out around that and, and I'm curious as these, you know, I'm sure 
people are coming here. We see all around us, right? There's yeah. Autonomous vehicles, there's robots, there's regular forklifts, there's giant ass forklifts across <laughs> the way from us here too as well. And you know, all kinds of things, but it, it can be overwhelming in a sense, right? So as people are coming in here and maybe they're just starting that automation journey, what's kind of maybe the one piece of advice you would give them to, to start off on the right foot? Yeah, it, it, a lot of it's knowing what your profile actually is, not what you think yeah. it is, but from a data standpoint, what your your business profile actually is. And then finding partners that you just have the right feeling about from an engagement standpoint, right? Like they're okay. there to actually help you solve a problem. They're not there to shoehorn a solution. Right? Yeah. That, that's where, um, if you don't get the sense that the, the vendor is vested in actually solving a problem for you, right. probably should look <laughs> at another place. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, and I think that's a great piece of advice too. And I think what you said initially, you know, understanding what actually is the fit for my operation versus yes. you know just going after something that's wow, like you know, catching my attention. Yeah, like that, yeah. Right? You know, there's there's uh, a couple of robotics platforms that have deployed lots and lots of units. Yes. Uh, and there's an inclination of why aren't we doing that, right? right. And it, maybe you should be, uh, yeah. but you don't know until you get into the data, the very specifics of the application, and going through the, the process, and the vendor should guide you uh, to a pretty big degree. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, I think that's such a great piece of advice. And so, as we look to the future, you know, and we're, we're seeing some of the future, I think, here at the show, right? Yeah. Including Third Wave, I mean, uh, you just had some, some new announcements and some things like that, but what does the future of Third Wave Automation look like? Yeah, so we're standing in the resonant booth, uh, resonant link booth, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so there's uh, not a cryptic message there, uh, autonomous right. charging is going to be a yeah. big part of what we provide in the future, which All is right. really just about expanding fleet capabilities. Yeah. Right? Uh, additionally, I think that you're going to see uh, some exciting announcements coming around operating in different types of environments than we have historically. Um, some areas that have been challenging for automation, um, still core to pallet movement ultimately. Yeah. But, Really excited about that from a third wave perspective to, to kind of open the envelope up, go into a little bit more challenging world where, frankly, the, the labor problems are worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's very interesting and we'll be very interested to see uh, the future of third wave automation and, yeah. and how those things continue to develop as well. So, Mike, I want to thank you so much for yeah. joining me and talking to me today. If people want to learn more about third wave automation, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, stop by the booth. Uh, we're in Hall C. Would happy to chat about anything warehousing related or yes. actual autonomous vehicles yeah. or look us look us up at uh, thirdwave.ai. Absolutely, and I definitely agree. Mike is happy to talk anytime <laughs> about anything warehouse related. He's a big nerd when it comes to warehouses, so give him a follow on LinkedIn too. He's a yeah, great yeah. resource. So, Mike, thank you so much. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right, thank you.